Hey everybody, E5 here, and today we're taking a quick look at how to fight the Doom Wheel boss in the brand new Vermintide mod for Darkest Dungeon. Now in case you missed our recent overview, Vermintide is an absolutely giant mod for Darkest Dungeon, which features among other things a ton of new enemies and eight unique bosses, and it's always a treat for me to examine the kinds of boss designs contained in quality mods like this one. Now this fight serves as a sort of introductory boss, as it's the first boss quest you'll get after a bit of progression in the Warpstone Mines, and while I think this is one of the easier bosses contained in this mod, it has some interesting mechanics. I think it looks and sounds pretty great, and can be a bit tricky, especially at higher tier if you're not prepared for what it can do. As life ebbs, terrible vistas of emptiness reveal themselves. Now, an apprentice doom wheel has 95 hit points, 20% prot, no dodge, and medium speed. He's vulnerable to blight damage, can be stunned, and is basically immune to bleeds. Important to note that the boss is also considered a rat, unholy, and warp engineered type of enemy. So, any quirks or trinkets you have which counter those types are worth consideration. Now, a core mechanic for this fight is denoted by this bell icon, which states that the Doom Wheel is sensitive to light, and a high torch will mean greater accuracy on his high damage attacks, and should you choose to snuff the torch and fight in the dark, you'll have to confront the chance of being hit by an increased amount of horrify and stress damage. Now, the Doom Wheel cycles between different phases. When you start the fight, the machine looks a neutral color and has two turns, or stacks of initiative. And this is the preheat phase. At the end of round one, the wheel changes to engine overheat, which buffs Torchlight and gives him another initiative for a powerful round of three turns. Now at the end of an overheat, he'll cool down the engine, which heals himself a small amount, takes on a colder appearance, and has only one initiative this time. And then he'll go back to preheat and repeat the cycle. Now, during each of these phases, he has a number of different abilities he can do. He's likely to open with an ability called Always More Beside, which targets one of your heroes with a strong horrify and summons a torchlighter rat behind him, whose primary purpose is to bring up the torchlight. The light, the promise of safety. Now, this boss's main attack is called Rolling Doom, which targets your whole team for a lot of damage and shuffles their positions. Now this is easily the scariest feature of this boss, and the primary reason you'll want to think about dropping Torch to decrease its accuracy. It also has a chance to target a hero with Zap Zap, a high-powered Blight attack, which in my experience is much more rare, and can also attack the front two heroes with its side blades and a move called Man-Thing Flare, which lands a moderate bleed and another heavy horrify. Now keep in mind that he'll always cast Flare at the end of any cooldown phase. Now in all, this fight happens pretty fast, given the low HP of the boss and his many turns. And depending on your group makeup, can either feel pretty easy or disastrous. And that's almost always due to the shuffle and damage attributed to Rolling Doom. And while dropping the torch can aid your team in dodging these heavy attacks, don't take for granted how quickly the stress will add up. Thankfully, there's a few simple ways to counter this boss. Remember that this boss is vulnerable to blight damage, and stacking blight against his many turns can tick down pretty quickly. Now, bringing a shuffle-ready group can be a decent way to counter the displacement from rolling doom, and because doom and flare are both AoE attacks, repost can have a lot of value. Now, a fun trick on this boss is that you can actually shuffle the Torchlighter Rat in the back up to the front, and it will be killed by the Rolling Doom, absorbing most of the blow. So having the ability to shuffle or pull that rat forward can be a fantastic way to mitigate damage. One last interesting thing to note about this boss is that it actually buffs itself in reaction to how many virtues or afflictions your team has. You'll note that when we started the fight, it gave itself a buff called Let's Hold Fast, and that is because we had an equal number of virtues and afflictions in the party. 
The second you have more afflictions in your party than virtues, it'll change to eager to fight and give itself crit and damage. And if you have more virtues, then we'll change to a more cowardly stance, debuffing its damage and crit. And so long as you keep from losing control to afflictions, shuffle and heavy damage, you should be able to make it through this fight fairly easily. Though I've certainly had a couple close calls, especially later game. Merit. And that, my friends, is a brief breakdown to the Vermintide Doomwheel, and what I consider one of the more creative and interesting modded bosses I've seen in quite a while. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think of this boss in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe for more Vermintide and everything else Darkest Dungeon. Come hang with us on Discord and keep an eye out for more boss breakdowns like this one in the near future. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you in the next one.